Hey everyone, Bruce here, DIY Homestead Projects channel. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a cut and etch test on a couple of welds with the ZX7200 Juba, my cheap Chinese stick welder. Uh, I'm going to do on a 3 8 inch piece, real small piece here I put together, some scrap. I'm going to leave the mill scale on it and run a bead. This is about a two inch long piece. Run a bead down one side, let it cool, and then do one on the other side. I'm gonna do a 6013 rod on one side and a 7018 rod on the other side. I'm real curious to see how that's gonna work out. Um, a couple of you have made a request and enjoy these cut and etch videos, even though I'm, you know, I'm just a DIYer garage welder type guy with not a heck of a lot of experience but it's fun to see what your weld does what how it comes out it's by no means any type of a official test but uh, I did a test of about a year ago on my modified Harbor Freight 90 amp flux core welder a cut and etch test it was pretty interesting so I thought it'd be fun to do one on this on this particular welder if I remember, I'll put a link to my other cut and etch test on the Harbor Freight machine if you haven't already seen it. I'll either put a link up here or I'll put a link in the uh, description. So let me get this all set up and then we'll uh, run a bead, let it cool, do the other side and we'll cut them and check them. All right, here's a look at the welds. This side is the 6013 and that's the best of the two. This is the 7018. These are both 1 8 inch rods. And I have a feeling that the uh, 7018 rods that I have are got some moisture in them because it was really difficult to start no matter what heat setting I had it put on. But, uh, and it didn't weld very well. The 7018s when they were brand new welded way better than I could weld with the 6013s, but the opposite is true now, and I think that that's why. I could be wrong. If you have an idea, let me know in the comments what you think, but anyway, either one of those is good enough to uh, get a pretty good cut and etch test, so I'm going to cut it, get it polished up just a little bit, and then, and then uh, put the acid on it, and we'll see what the welds look like. All right, guys, we got the results done on the uh, cut and etch test on the Juba 200. Just a couple things I want to mention about this little cheap welder. Remember, I have about $150 invested in this whole setup. That's the welder and the custom ground and stinger leads that I made for it, which is pretty darn minimal for a for a little welder with these capabilities. Now it's not a professional welder by any means, but for a hobbyist like myself, it'll do any stick welding that I'll ever need to do. Um, a couple of notes about it on the front face. I'll put up a screenshot for you. You look at the uh, the dial, it goes from 10 amps to two, 200 amps. Now I've seen and read many posts about this on this particular welder and most of the cheap Chinese stick welders that you can buy real real affordable. Even though it says 200 on the dial, I've been told that it only puts out about 120 amps. Uh, I have a friend that has a YouTube channel and he's doing some testing on this. When he completes that testing I'll let you know what he finds out. But he's going to actually test during the weld operation, the output of this machine, he has the exact same welder. Uh, he's guesstimating it's around 120 amps. So with that in mind, I ran these welds with this set at 150 amps, hoping to get about 110 or so. And I don't have a way at, at this point in time set up to where I can test that out. I'm pretty sure uh, it, it's probably less way less than 200 amps. But anyway, it'll run these 1 8 inch rods pretty well, I think. So let's look at this this <laughs> this box. Here, I have a question for you guys, and for some of you guys that are more knowledgeable about this than I am, 
it'd be nice to get your input and see what you think. I use these uh, 6013 rods by US Forge. I bought these at Menards when I was in Iowa. And if you look at the box on the back underneath procedure, it says use any AC or DC power source on DC straight polarity for shallow penetration, reverse polarity for deep penetration. And that is exactly the opposite of the way I understood this. Straight polarity is electrode negative, which is the way I, I had it set up when I did these welds. And under straight polarity, my thought was with the electrode negative, electrons flow from the negative to the positive. So they're flowing from the electrode to the workpiece. I figured that that was deeper penetration, but that's completely opposite of what this box says. So I'm wondering if US Forge got this box printed incorrectly. What do you guys think about that? Let me know in the comments if you know, if you have more information about that than I do. So I thought that was interesting. I had it set up according to the box for the uh, least amount of penetration. They say for deep penetration use reverse polarity, which is electrode positive. I did not use it in that manner. So in, anyway, that's interesting. And then the uh, Vulcan 7018 1 8 inch rods I was using, as I said before, I think they're, I think they need to be dried out. They're containing some moisture. At least that's my thought on it. And these are a low penetration rod. And the results show that. My uh, cut and etch test didn't come out real prominent, so hopefully you can see that. All right, let's look at the etch test. As you're looking at it, the left side is the 7018. That was the, the worst appearing weld from the surface. It uh, seemed didn't weld very smooth. It's got some pretty good undercut there. And the right side is the 6013. But if you look at the bead on the left side on the 7018 rod, that one has the most penetration. Nice deep weld. The toes are wetted in real nice and it got clear down into the root and got some decent penetration. On the right side, the 6013 rod, not a lot of penetration on that weld. The profile was nice and the exterior appearance was the best looking of the two. It did have just a little bit of undercut, but nowhere near what the other side had. And if you look down there in the toe, there's a little void or a little pocket there. But I'd be happy with either one of these welds for what I do around here. That'll, that'll hold anything that I plan to weld. And this is probably the thickest material, this 3 16 that I would really be welding. Maybe a quarter, but I, I don't really have much use to be welding anything that's a quarter inch thick. Anyway, it's a very interesting look at the welds and see their appearance, what kind of penetration you get, what the uh, weld nugget looks like. It just kind of shows you that the outside visual appearance of the weld doesn't necessarily mean it's the best weld. Anyway, it was a fun test to do. Very interesting. So these are the, you know, even though it's not a scientific or an official test of any sort, it's kind of nice to do this once in a while and see what your weld technique produces or what your machine can do. If you're welding the trailer or hitches or something that's really a critical item and, and there's potential safety involved in it, you know, that's up to you to decide what you would, would choose to weld with a welder like this. But anyway, thanks guys for uh, sitting in on this. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. That way I know uh, you guys are enjoying this type of video and I'll make more. If I get enough positive response on this particular video, maybe I'll do a cut and etch test on the new Prime Weld TIG 225. Even though I bought it for TIG, which I'm thoroughly enjoying, and I'm gonna be doing a few videos on it here in the near future. Um, it'd be nice to see, and kind of play around with the uh, stick function as well, and, and maybe do a cut and etch test to see how that comes out. I'm pretty pleased with the welder. For the money that I have into it, it's pretty capable little shop. 
welder for a DIY or hobbyist kind of person like myself. Heck, you can build barbecue grills, um, repair things around the house, racks, tool stands, all those things you can build with this type of welder, even if it is only putting out 120 amps. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thumbs up if you like it. If you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel. This is kind of what my channel is all about. Not necessarily a 100% welding channel, but all kinds of DIY homestead projects around the house and tinkering and experimenting. Hope you guys are having a great day, and we'll see you on the next video.